How to run mass combat today on Dungeon Craft. Welcome to Dungeon Craft. I'm Professor Dungeon Master, and this channel is about running the ultimate game of Dungeons and Dragons. Level up by subscribing and click the bell icon for future notifications, and you'll be on your way to adventure. Recently, my players stated their desire for an Arthurian campaign where they would play knights, commanding tons of troops and armies, and that. I realized would necessitate rules for mass combat. Also, I was running a game at Gen Con called Macbeth. It's based on Shakespeare's Macbeth. It opens with a huge, massive battle with thousands of combatants, and it ends with a siege on a castle with 10,000 combatants. But I can't take an entire castle and every model I have to Gen Con, so what was I going to do? Now, in the old days, I'll tell you what I did. I took every piece of terrain I have and every model, miniature I have, and put them on a table so it would look sufficiently epic. Then I would adapt some tabletop wargaming rules like Warhammer, simplify it, and roll out the results. Don't do this. There's a huge difference between tabletop war games and RPGs, even though Dungeons and Dragons is descended from tabletop war games. They are totally different experiences, and it took me three decades of playing both these types of games to figure out why. So listen carefully so you don't make the same mistakes I did. War games are about tactics and simulation. They're very crunchy. They're over here on the simulation scale. Role-playing games are about character and story. They're over here. That doesn't mean that role-playing gamers aren't into tactics. Many of them are, but not to this level. You could do like I did, make your characters commanders and say, here are your ten troops and they are following you and you must lead them to victory. But I've discovered they don't care about those troops. Even if they have to roll for them, they don't care about them. They only care about their individual characters and their place in the story. Before somebody brings it up, I am familiar with the 5th edition Unearthed Arcana rules for mass combat, but I'm not really thrilled with it. It's very crunchy. You have to figure out challenge ratings and compare them and then roll dice and do a lot of calculations. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes to figure out who won the battle. That's about 14 minutes too long for me. For my system, I want to get back to the roots of D&D, the Robert Howard Conan stories, the Elric stories, and the Lord of the Rings. Howard and Moorcock in particular wrote really great battle scenes, and they're really visceral. They're, they're not tactical. They're just really action-filled and bloody, and I wanted to capture that attitude and, and somehow put it in a game. To do that, I turned to a couple of places. One is Chaosium Stormbringer game, which is based on Moorcock's writing. I was curious as to how they handled mass combat, since there's so much of it in those novels. And just like in the novels, it's really fast. The Game Master describes the tableau of fighting, then we cut to your character, you make essentially a saving throw versus death to see if you survive the combat, and if you do, the Game Master tells you who won the battle. That's it. Now, I don't know if you want to hinge your character's lives on just a single die roll, so I've added a few more steps than that, but I wanted it to definitely feel visceral and just action-packed and propel the characters through the story. The other inspiration are war movies, like Saving Private Ryan, which begins with Tom Hanks' point of view, then we cut to the overall beaches at Normandy, then it's always back to Tom Hanks' point of view. He's the focal character, and the most important battles are the ones he's directly involved in. Same with Luke Skywalker in, in Star Wars. We'll start with a massive battle with Star Destroyers and tons of X-Wings and bombers going all over the place. Then we focus on Luke Skywalker. So this system will have three distinct phases. First, you as the Dungeon Master describe the scene of battle, and then we're going to roll to see if the characters are injured. Next, we go to the skirmish phase, where we focus on the player characters and see if they can meet their individual objectives. Finally, we determine a winner, and I'll show you how you could do that either just by making the decision or by deciding it randomly with dice. So let's go to the table and check it out. The armies stare at one another from across the field. The orcs bang their swords on their shields and howl menacingly. You charge across the muddy field in the pouring rain. There's the clash of steel, the leather and bone, howls of agony of dying men, gurgling as men and orcs are trampled to death or drown in the mud. Roll for survival. So I set a difficulty somewhere, if let's say the armies are evenly matched at 11, and the player character has to roll 11 or better, and I'll allow them to adjust it with their strength modifier, because it's a strength effort. And if they make the roll, like I just did, they suffer no damage. If they fail, they take d4 damage. If you fail again, you take d4 more. If you succeed, you proceed to the next phase. This process repeats until you make it to the next phase or your character is killed, which can happen in a mass battle. If they roll a 20, they get advantage in the first battle in the next stage, the skirmish. If you're unlucky enough to roll a natural 1, you take 2d4 in damage. 
I chose a d4 because it's a house rule in my game that all characters max out at 15 hit points. If you're playing straight up 5e, just take the die that's roughly 25% of their total hit points and roll that. So if they have 40 hit points, it's a d10. If they have 50 hit points, it's a d12. Anything over that, it's a d20. Stage two is the skirmish phase. You want to stage one to three encounters where the player characters play an integral part. They're going to have a clear objective, like to plant a banner on a hill or to pick up a fallen banner so the army knows which way to go, or to eliminate a leader in order to break the morale of the troops. Think of each skirmish as its own encounter or room. Here's a scene from Macbeth. The edge of the ultimate dungeon terrain represents the fog of war. It functions like walls. They can't see beyond it. They don't know what's happening in the larger battle. The objective is to kill the orc leader on this hill in order to break the orc's morale. They battle their way up the hill, slay the orc, chop off his head, and plant their flag on top. They've won. Cut to the next scene. In this scene from my Arthurian campaign, the characters are laying siege to a castle. I skip the long, boring siege part and begin the scene with the characters already on top of the walls. Having scaled them, their objective is to open the gate for the rest of the army. In this skirmish, the heroes need to rescue terrified peasants from a town overrun with enemy forces. I set up the UDT before the game. There are alleys and bridges and fighting in close corners and snipers and lots of opportunity for exciting combat. I recommend including up to three such skirmishes, but a good one like this may be enough. Finally, we have to determine the winner of the overall battle. Now, there are just two ways for you to do this. One is the dramatic way where the dungeon master, knowing the entire plot and where they want it to go next, just makes a decision. Maybe you want this to be the Empire Strikes Back section of your campaign, where the characters lose and they're defeated and they're reduced to their absolute lowest point before finally rising up to make a comeback in the final chapter. Or maybe it is the final chapter, like Return of the Jedi, and you want the good guys to just win. In this case, just make it happen. You are the dungeon master. It is your right to be able to control your own story. On the other hand, the other method, which I'm going to show you, is to use dice. And this is only to be used if you don't really care about the outcome. If you're the type of DM that wants to fly by the seat of their pants and enjoy the game and watch it unfold like the players, not knowing the outcome, by all means, roll the dice. This is how to do it. If the armies are evenly matched, each side rolls a 20-sided die. The players get a plus one if they won their skirmish. This makes them feel as if their actions made a difference, even if they don't win the overall battle. Here are the good guys and the bad. 16 to 9, the bad guys win. All of the factors, the geography, weather, training, morale of the troops, if the troops are well fed or sick, superior tactics, the charisma of the commanders, it's all baked into this single roll. Let the dice tell you the story. In this case, it is an absolute total victory, natural 20 over a 10. Several of the bad guys' commanders have been killed. 1 to 11. The players' troops were suffering from gonorrhea, leading to their complete destruction. The officers were either captured or killed and need to be ransomed, and the player characters have to run, and that army has been broken to the point where it cannot be reassembled. In this case, the bad guys outnumber the players two to one. In a result like this, the characters' forces fight valiantly, but they're ultimately overwhelmed by the sheer volume and number of the other side's troops. Now. 14 to 12 is not a really decisive victory. The characters would have an opportunity to withdraw and fight again another day. George Washington did this for several years in the Revolutionary War. As long as an army isn't crushed with a natural one, it's always possible to regroup and get reinforcements and keep fighting. The armies are evenly matched, but the player characters have the advantage of having a castle. The castle withstands the siege. Now, what happens if there's a tie? In this case, there's no decisive winner. Both armies withdraw from the field, and they'll have to fight another day, probably after getting reinforcements. If they're sentient, they might reach a truce and decide to just split whatever land they're fighting over in half. Let's do the Battle of Five Armies from The Hobbit. Here's the elves, dwarves, and men versus the goblins. And the eagles arrive at the last moment. Through the combined efforts, the good guys prevail. Here's the Battle of Agincourt from Henry V. There's King Henry, and he's outnumbered by French 3 to 1. The night before, there's a terrible rainstorm, and the heavily armored French cavalry and knights are weighed down in the mud, making them easy pickings for the English longbowmen, giving Henry advantage. Despite all odds, he prevails. 
Cersei Lannister has a huge army and is defending a walled city. Daenerys Targaryen has a huge army, but also a massive fire-breathing dragon. And natural 20, King's Landing is reduced to ashes. Now, what if the bad guys have a unit of ogres, or regenerating trolls, or fireball-flinging wizards? Just add an extra 20-sided die or two. Your guess is as good as mine, and it's as good as any designer's, because things like trolls and magic users don't actually exist. We have no way of accurately judging what the impact of magic users would be, and I don't know how many magic users there are in your world. In my world, they're very rare. There would only be like one or two magic users per army, but your world might be different. My world doesn't have a lot of clerics either, but your world might. There is no way to accurately take into account every factor in a real life battle, let alone one that contains dragons and vampires, and any attempt to do so is going to slow the game down to a crawl. Also, no matter what the odds, I think history has taught me that no army or opponent is invincible. No system I've ever read, not Warhammer, not the 5e unearthed arcana mass combat rules, no system has ever considered the effect of an outbreak of ogre dysentery. But that would make a huge difference. There's no set of rules that could possibly cover everything, so you're just going to have to make it up yourself. Don't worry, you're a dungeon master. I have faith in you. If you enjoyed this video, give it the thumbs up and share it on social media. If you want more great tips on how to run D&D, you should check out these videos over here. Questions, comments, put them below. Our Facebook group is rapidly growing, so check that out. Also, if you want to help the channel improve, I have a Patreon account. Check out the link below. Once again, this is Professor Dungeon Master for Dungeon Craft. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you at the table. May all your rolls be 20s.